Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Okay. The question that I want to start off with this morning is what is a dangerous prayer? We must first begin with the understanding that God, our almighty, powerful Father in heaven, hears our prayers. So what is a dangerous prayer? A dangerous prayer is a radical prayer that when we pray it, God actually answers it. And let me explain and give you an example. If you were to find a quiet place in your home, away from all distractions, and pray this prayer, this would classify as a dangerous prayer. If you were to say, Lord, I pray that you would break me of old habits so that I may be able to honor you more. How many of you know that that's a dangerous prayer? When you pray that God would break you of your old habits, you better be ready for the change that is about to come to your life. It is going to hurt. It is going to be uncomfortable. He is going to stretch you in ways that you didn't know that you could stretch. He will bend you in ways that you didn't know that you can bend. He may ask you to surrender things that you're clinging on to. It may be uncomfortable. This is an example of a dangerous prayer. And we're going to come back to this a little bit later, but there are two dangerous prayers that I want us to pray this morning towards the end of this sermon. But first, I'd like to share a little bit of my testimony with you. Ever since I was young, my parents took me to church. So I grew up hearing God's word, but I never took it serious enough to apply it to my life. In high school, I hung out with the wrong crowd, and I did a lot of things that I wish I could change and take back. But there was a change that was coming to my life that I didn't see. Now in college, I came home after a party, and for some reason I decided to put on some Christian music. A song started to play by Jeremy Camp. It's called Walk by Faith. And at that moment, there was such a deep conviction that came into my life. And it was a conviction that told me that God wasn't pleased with the way I was living my life. So after laying in bed for a while, stirring in my conviction of sin, I realized that I needed to make a personal decision to give my life to Christ. At that point, I was right on the edge, ready to give my life to Christ. But I wasn't quite ready yet. And I said, God, I don't know how this works. But I've been going to church my whole life, and I'm ready to give my life completely over to you. But before I do that, I need to know something. I need to know that you are real. And I wasn't testing God or asking God to prove himself to me, but in humility and brokenness, I said, God, I need to know that you are real. It was at that moment that God revealed himself to me in a personal way. At that moment, I knew that God is real and that God is alive. I was excited and now ready to give my life to Christ, and I didn't know it at the time, but I was getting ready to pray a dangerous prayer. I said, God, I'm holding nothing back. Take my life and do with it whatever you want to do. That was a dangerous prayer, and looking back, I'm so glad that I prayed that prayer and made that commitment in my life But can I be honest with you this morning? I had no idea how serious God was going to take that commitment. I had no idea about the change that was about to come into my life. At that time, I was in full partnership with my dad in the remodeling business. I was working full-time and going to school for sales and marketing. My dad and I made an amazing team together. The company had been in business for about 20 years and had done extremely well. But when my dad and I teamed up together, in just over a year, we had, we had doubled the profitability of the company compared to the best year that Hardwood Design had ever seen in the past 20 years. So needless to say, financially, at a very young age, I was doing well. And this was all happening the same time that I prayed that dangerous prayer. And what God asked me to do next was one of the hardest decisions that I've ever made in my life. He asked me to leave this thriving, rapidly growing company and attend an unpaid Christian internship. Talk about uncomfortable and talk about being stretched. And have any of you ever had a moment in in your life when God has asked you to do something and your response is, you want me to do what? God, I, I don't understand. You want me to do what? I was having one of those moments, and I didn't know what God was doing at the time, but looking back, now I do. God was calling 
the leader out of me. At that point in my life, God saw something in me that I didn't even know that I had. God had seen a greater purpose in me that I didn't have vision enough to dream for. God was changing me. And I think that this goes to show that God sees potential in people even when we don't. He takes the outcasts of society, he takes the sinners, he takes the lost, the lonely, the ones without hope. He takes me and he takes you and he calls the potential out of us. He calls the leader out. God did this with Paul on the road to Damascus. Paul, if you remember, had the mission of persecuting and destroying the early church. Paul then had an encounter with God that changed his life forever. God gave him a new purpose and a new direction. God was calling the leader out of Paul. If you remember, Gideon was in hiding at the wine press from the Midianites when God came to him and called him a mighty man of valor, a warrior. I bet when he was hiding from the Midianites, he didn't feel like a man of valor or a warrior. But God was calling out his potential. God was calling the leader out of Gideon. And this morning, I believe that God may be calling the leader out of you. There is something in you that God sees. He may even see something that you don't see. And God is able to look past all of our faults, all of our insecurities, and he begins to call the leader out. He is calling you mighty men and mighty women of valor. He's saying, I have created you for more, and there are things that I want to show you that you may not even be able to dream of on your own. He is calling greatness out of you, and he is calling the leader out. So the first point that I want to make this morning is that when you experience God, and you choose to lay your life down for him, and he begins to call the leader out of you, like Paul and like Gideon, God will change your vision. That's point number one. The second point that I want to make this morning is that when he sets your life on course, God will grow your vision. In Romans fifteen nineteen. this is Paul speaking. He's giving a report, and he says, From Jerusalem all the way around Illyricum, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. I'm going to say that one more, one more time. From Jerusalem all the way around Illyricum, we're talking about an entire region. He says, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. And can we agree that th this morning that that is a huge accomplishment? Can we agree that that was an enormous undertaking, that Paul shared Christ with an entire region? The temptation comes in after accomplishing a great deal for Christ to say things like, well, my work here is done. I have done my time. It almost sounds like a prison sentence. I've done my time. It is time for me to take it easy. But this wasn't Paul's attitude. Paul already had plans to go on to the next region. His vision grew. God expanded his vision. And if I could pause my sermon for a minute, and interject a compliment. I just want to say I love working on staff here. You guys are amazing. This church is amazing. And it is an honor to be able to serve alongside of you. And I'm learning more and more with the time that I spend here that you, this church has already been so faithful in serving Christ in this community. This church already has a great amount of influence in this community. So the question that I ask is this church has already accomplished so much where do we go from here? How can we continue to grow and allow God to take us further? So that is going to be what we're going to be discussing at Camp Wanaki at the leadership retreat. If you're able to make that, I'd encourage it. Um, it's going to be a time <clears throat> where us as staff were able to share our ideas with you and how we can grow in the future and also give you the chance um, for us to be able to hear your ideas as well to see how God can expand our vision and where we go in the future. So getting back to the sermon, let's review that point number one is God will change your vision, and point number two is God will grow your vision. And I believe that there are two dangerous prayers that we need to pray in order to allow God to change our vision 
and to put us on the right path so that he can continue to grow our vision. And these are not just prayers that we pray, but they are commitments. They are attitudes that we carry in our everyday life. And we're going to take time just to pray for those right now. So the first one that we're going to pray, this is one of surrender. You know, God, is there anything in my life that is holding me back? Is there anything that is keeping me from my full potential in Christ? If so, this is going to be an opportunity for you to lay those down. And the second one is a prayer of simply asking God to use me. God, present me with opportunities to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. And I believe that when we pray these, God will begin to strip us of the things that are holding us back, and he will begin to give us opportunities that will call us outside of our comfort zone. So that being said, let's go ahead and pray. If you could bow your heads. Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. I'm so thankful that you rescued us. And right now, just make this prayer personal between you and God and say, God, I ask you to search my heart. Is there anything that needs to go? Anything at all? Is there anything that is holding me back from achieving my full potential? Just take a moment right now just to make that personal between you and God. Say, God, search my heart. Show me what needs to go. It may be fear. It may be anger. It may be insecurities. It may be a secret sin. Maybe you need to let go of some things so that there's more time for God in your, in your schedule. Whatever it is, whatever he's showing you right now, This is just a time right now just to release those things to God. Whatever he's showing you, just say, God, I surrender these things to you. I give them to you, Lord. I'm not going to hold on to them any longer. Thank you, Lord. As we continue to pray the second prayer, just asking God to use you God, use me. God, at this moment, I pray that you would call the leader out of every person in here. Show us that you have created us for an amazing purpose. And just pray this in your heart. Saying, Lord, use me. I know that you could use anybody, but you are choosing to use me. For a specific purpose, for a specific task, you have a special responsibility just for me. And right now, I'm choosing to lay down my time, my talents, my gifts, resources. They're yours, Lord. Would you use them and use me in a way that you see fit? Use me to impact others for Christ. I pray that you would take notice of me and use me for your work. Call the greatness out of me. Call out my potential. Would you call the leader out of me, Lord? I'm giving you permission right now to change my vision. And I'm giving you permission right now to grow my vision. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.